Hello everyone and good morning. Uh, I'm Sabya Mukherjee. Today I'll be talking about how we, how we did the reactive to preventive management of fraud in Manulife. I lead machine learning engineering and generative AI for Manulife Canada. And a little bit about Manulife. Manulife is a global financial service provider and we serve millions of customers and every year we serve about more than 100 million plus of transaction for claims adjudication. Now, I would like to share today our transformation from reactive to preventative fraud in particularly in the claim space. Now, Forbes estimate that in, for insurance companies, fraud is costing about $300 billion a year. Now, this is not just a corporate cost. At the end of the day, most of the cases, this huge amount of money ends up within the organized crime network, which gets funded for various crimes and money laundering activities. And the impact doesn't stop there. This huge sum of money, $300 billion a year, at the end of the day, it gets trickled down to each of the individual customer who is paying for their policy and their service. Every time a fraud is committed, the cost of the service goes up for an honest policyholder. Now, historically, management of fraud is a bit of a cat and mouse game, where each of the time like we try getting better at technology, making sure that we detect and prevent fraud, fraudsters find their way using like technology and advancement to push forward and find new loophole to exploit. So it's, it's crucial that we learn and share our uh, findings for better and robust way to prevent fraud in the future and always staying a couple of steps ahead for the fraudster. So we'll talk a little bit about our journeys. We started about 2018 kind of putting an advanced analytics AI machine learning lens to our fraud management system. And historically, our fraud management system, particularly in the claim space, had been very much rules engine specific. Rules engine specific, anonymous tips, or market intelligence. Because most of the cases, this claims process take time. At huge amount and huge number of our claims still gets processed and passed as a scanned image, paper form. And when you are adjudicating hundreds of millions of claims a year, it's extremely difficult to do that, to do that at scale, let alone just the adjudication part. Now, what we did was the first step was to build some sort of an anomaly detection model using structured data. We did that using isolation forest. We saw some really good outcome, but still most of the positive leads coming for fraud detection was coming from market intelligence tips. So what we thought, like once we moved into fully cloud native stack, it gave us the capability to tap onto unstructured data within forms. It, it helped us building something like a graph analytics. It helped us building some sort of a risk-based approach to make sure that when we understand the risk is very low or non-existent, the claims experience is as smooth as possible. Whereas whenever we detect that there is a high risk of it is being fraud, depending on whether it's a receipt or whether it's the customer's past behavior and so on, we try to ask for more questions, making sure that we have all the checks in place. Now, for today's topic, we'll be focusing on the document intelligence and computer vision part of it, and how we are using generative AI, combining all these things together to make sure that we are catching the frauds even before it happens. Because most of the time, when the money goes out, it's extremely difficult to get that money back. So at the time of fraud, when it's happening, a, a fictitious receipt or claim is submitted, we need to find a way to detect those. With the new system, we actually saw at the moment, 60% of all our fraud positive leads are attributed to this particular models of advanced analytics and machine learning. So we are seeing some extremely good result and I'll do a little bit deep dive onto that. So we do have three components for all the things that I talked about. One, first one is the document intelligence part of it. What's document intelligence? Document from all the claims journey you'd see that typically they have a receipt to attach, a doctor's note, 
or a discharge letter, something like that. And historically, they have been very, very um, difficult to parse through because of all the varieties of documents that you could find. So we are using Azure AI document intelligence, previously known as form recognizer, to extract all the key information from these documents. Now, there are a couple of flavors within uh, Azure document intelligence. Microsoft created some of the models out of the box with the receipts and uh, invoices they could get their hands off. So billions of documents and they're like really good general model. So if we could detect that this is a receipt or this is um, an invoice, we do have off the shelf model, extract all the information that we want from, from those receipts and invoices. Now there are forms. Forms are very custom to manual life business, a particular topic and particular format, particular layout. So we, do, we did build some of the um, document classification engine, which identifies whether this is a receipt or invoice, a particular form that needs to be extracted. And there are custom models. We built those custom models to make sure that those models are very specific to the specific types of forms to extract the values. So what are we doing with those extracted values? First of all, like we see that when a form is doctored, it, it has like different fonts from like an existing image. There are very weird behavior. It's, it's if a human could take a look. So what we did was we, we spoke with the claims adjudicator saying, hey, uh, with your past experience, what are the different things that you see? They said, oh, I could tell like just something is wrong because the font is not right. The alignments are a little bit off. See, there are a dollar sign missing in one of the dollar values. See, there are, um, trailing decimal points, they, they look a little bit of fishy. There are scratch marks all over the forms. So what we could do is we could actually extract all those information and parse through those information really quickly to make sure that if any of these kind of uh, human hunch, when we look at the form, they can be flagged. One particular um, item was extremely interesting is on the address. So typically a form that will have, let's say, hospital address and the patient's address. Now, if, the, if it is a computerized system, typically they happen to be of the very similar format, the postal code, the address. But if it is some way manipulated, modified, it's like all over the place. So what we are doing is we are kind of trying to understand how each of these formats, fonts, all the properties, they're, they're, they, they fall into the standard uh, normal expectation. Uh, one interesting tidbit I saw, I, I came to know from one of the adjudicator that they, at, at point in times, people even uploaded the image of their like dog or cat or a cup just to just pass it along because they knew that if it is like hundreds of millions of claims being uploaded, it's extremely difficult for somebody to actually look through the image, whether this is a right or wrong. But now with all these uh, classification model going through each of these forms, we can certainly be sure that all of these forms are correct in order and we expect to see what uh, is defined in the system. And if it is not, we flag that, hey, the document doesn't look right, could you please upload the right document or flag it for an adjudicator to review. Now, we still had one other challenge that all the things that I talked about, font properties, whether there is a signature or not, uh, whether there's a decimal or not, it is time consuming to build. If we want to do it within a natural language processing tool or try to write regular expression, they take really, really long time. And the turnaround time is really high. And it, the space always evolves. So we needed a much better, faster and scalable way to do it. So we had, Generative AI, very surprisingly, it, it helped us in addressing all those problems. Typically, when we talk about generative AI, we think about, okay, it's generating a poetry, it's drafting email for us. But what we are do using generative AI is completely the other side of spectrum. We are actually extracting key information from all these forms, document, and uh, Azure form recognizers extracted value. So essentially what's happening is we are passing a JSON, we are using some prompts, we are doing some fine tuning with that. And by experimenting, we are seeing tremendous value out of it without writing any natural language processing type of code. So this is one of my, like, I, I like this example a lot, but this is just one of the example. 
So one of the particular field in the form, it says like how frequently you get paid, whether it's a disability claim or whether it's a service. So on the second column, you'd see that these are all the fields that we receive, like bi-weekly, yearly, once a month, all different sort of abbreviations possible because whether it's a doctor's note or somebody typed in. And with 10,000 samples, we saw actually saw 60 plus different variation. Writing an NLP code or regular expression is extremely difficult. Whereas what it took for us is like maybe half an hour to write this three or four line prompt, provide some good example and get out clear, crystal clear uh, post-processing with generative AI. It's probably not clear in the slide uh, because of the transcription. We are getting 92% accuracy with just this simple four line uh, prompt. Whereas um, in the previously we, we had to spend weeks to optimize a small language model and uh, make it better for us. Uh, another thing that we are doing is very similar within the generative AI is address standardization, extracting the information, trying to understand if the postal code match, if there is any weirdness within uh, the address. Uh, the last one is more on the computer vision side of things. So one uh, typical fraud pattern that we saw that uh, if someone is making up a uh, receipt, a doctor's receipt, or a, like let's say glass vision receipts, they pick up on reputed provider, service provider, for example, like Costco vision and other vision, they pick up their uh, logo and their stamp to put it, to make it look like it's very legible because a human adjudicator, when they would look, they will just pass, okay, it's, a, it's from a reputed company. I don't need to look through the receipts. So what we have been doing is using, so this is like about like a 10 line of code we are using OpenCV to extract, like if a particular image exists within the particular within the particular form. So we have an like image library where we see, for example, this this is not a claim form as you could see, but it's from all the grocery that somebody built, trying to understand that if this particular item or if this particular logo icon was present in the bag of groceries, and it is doing a like really remarkable job. So the principle remains same. We are doing this for all the logos and stamp to extract that if that logo doesn't match with the provider name in, in, the, in that receipts. So we, we talked about three things together, uh, document analytics, OCR type of pipeline, generative AI and image processing pipeline. So how do they all fit together? So on the next one, I'd show what our overall high level architecture looks like. So, we receive through multiple channels, we receive all the documents and claims through multiple channels like mobile, web, scanned paper image, physical paper that comes to our mail room which needs to be scanned. So all these like millions and hundreds of millions of images, they pass through this analytics engine. We use uh, Delta Lake we, for experimentation, for managing our uh, all the accuracy and ev all these experimentation and orchestration we are using MLflow and on the top of that engine, by the way, we are under uh, within Azure ecosystem uh, and uh, Databricks analytics system. So those three things like pre-built and custom model to extract all the information that I talked about, like uh, name, dollar value, date, date inconsistency is another uh, big uh, thing within um, fraud space. So extracting all those information, having uh, like OCR outcome, JSON, that gets passed to OpenAI. So we are using um, Azure OpenAI uh, services, private endpoints. We are experimenting with uh, small language model, some, some taking the foundational model and can we fine tune to very specific use case? This is something we are working on. But at the end of the day, this is this layer, this capability is very focused on generative AI, extracting key information from JSON and trying to understand if there is any inconsistency. Similarly, the OpenCV and image detection part, this is where all the business rules and anomaly detection engine, they kind of come together. So think, think from this way, like we do have all the structured information we already had from like past our like last three, four years where we built, it's all the customer information for the, their claim pattern, dollar value, how far the service provider, like we see all the structured information all the time. For example, there are always anomalies, right? Like if you see that 
a particular customer went uh, 700 miles or like 300 miles away for doing a massage in the like, middle of the week. And then there is another massage like 200 miles away. That's kind of raise uh, the flag. But those are all structured information. What's happening within this is taking all the structured information and all the unstructured information in all the three, three layers, grouping them together into a classification model. So at the end, we have a classification model which takes care of all these input coming from all these flags saying, okay, we have this, we have this. Oh, there are four red flags raised and we do know what are the relative importance within each of these um, bucket. What happens at the end of the day, it creates a structured output with an assigned risk score for each and every of the claim. And depending on what type of uh, flag it was raised, what is the risk, our claims adjudicator could see a handful of lists that this is the claim that's, um, that needs to be looked into. Uh, or, or maybe we should ask for more question, hey, upload more supporting document for your particular claim. So this is at a high level architecture of how we are managing our current system. But we are, extend, we are not stopping here. We are extending our work into a graph uh, network, connecting, trying to find the networks hidden within the pattern. We are looking to use a uh, unified feature store for all particular claims experience and trying to surface those up together in the chain. So we, we have seen a huge success rate, huge boost uh, coming out of all these unstructured data when we incorporate into the claims business. And we found that Generative AI was a game changer for us, how fast and how quickly we could uh, incorporate all the suggestion from business insights into our um, delivery life cycle. But funny enough, Generative AI is actually creating a lot of challenges. Think of mid-journey. There are pockets where we are seeing that people trying to use Generative AI to generate fake receipts, fake image based off of good images. And we are uh, actually actively exploring different ways, particularly metadata, exif, to understand if a particular image was uh, generated using generative AI. Remember like six months back, we used to say that uh, any image that generates with uh, additional fingers and toes, they are uh, generative AI generated and we could easily tell, but now, mid-journey and all other generative image software, they're getting really better and better. So people tried using these um, f good examples, prompt engineering to get better. It's not yet that great level, but again, as I say, it's a, it's a cat and mouse game. We'll always have to stay a couple of steps ahead in the game to make sure we have a robust framework to prevent and detect fraud. So this was my personal goal of sharing our learning to, with all of you, because with learning, sharing, and collaboration, we could get stronger and better preventing fraud. Uh, so uh, that's from my side. Uh, I'll be staying around. If there is any question, I'm happy to answer. Thank you. <laughs>